Uh, it means a new era of uh, working uh, with the world in terms of different dimensions of trade, cultural exchanges. Uh, it means that uh, Iran is going to be a more uh, prominent player in this part of the world. Uh, the Some role people say of already way too prominent. Exactly. Well, uh, in, in terms of promoting peace and security uh, with a good intention, I think that that's very important. It's uh, keeping Iran's identity, keeping Iran's prominent role and influence in the region uh, to promote peace and stability in this part of the world. Who really benefits from this deal? Who gets the credit in Iran? Is it the hardliners who held steadfast over the last 35, 36 years? Or is it the moderates, the reform-minded people like President Rouhani? I think that everyone is going to benefit more or less, uh, each group from its own perspective. Uh, because those who have resisted, those who have stood steadfast in face of all the sanctions, all the pressures, uh, they have actually enabled the nation to resist all these difficult times in spite of the sanctions we've had. I think that the, uh, the moderates, uh, the reformists, uh, uh, the uh, government of Dr. Rouhani uh, has a very clear, uh, uh, prominent position in terms of uh, being able to forward these uh, negotiations successfully and uh, to strike a deal. I think that this is, this is very important. This gives them also a lot of leverage among the Iranian political groups. But you've said yourself that there are radicals in the system who oppose the deal. And you say they're a minority, but they're actually quite powerful. They're quite vocal. They have a lot of access to media. The Revolutionary Guards have said that the deal crosses a red line for yeah. the Islamic Republic. Uh, I think that uh, there is this internal debate, and you can hear these, these different voices. A lot of Republicans in the U.S. are very upset with this deal. They say, you as Iran are never going to abide by your side of the deal. You cannot be trusted. You have concealed your nuclear program in the past. Why should we trust you now? On the contrary, uh, there's a lot of evidence pointing to the fact that Iran stands by its commitments uh, at the uh, international level, and we have been working to promote peace and security in the region, particularly the government of Dr. Rouhani. And in the region, we have the Israeli prime minister um, who says that you're going to get a cash bonanza that will feed your destructive rogue behavior in the region. Now, the money you're going to get from sanctions relief is your money. But how are you going to use it? Are you going to use it to rebuild the economy and the infrastructure? Or are you going to send funds, billions, to President Assad and Hezbollah? Uh, I think it's quite clear. We have uh, our national objectives. We have our uh, sixth uh, five-year development plan now underway. Uh, it's very clear we are intending to promote sustainable development. For so us. you're not going to send any we money need, to President Assad? We need to defend ourselves. There's no question to that. Uh, we're living in an area where we have about uh, maybe over 100 uh, American bases, uh, military bases in the region. But you've just signed region. a deal with America. Uh, well, it is still the, uh, uh, the bases are still there. Uh, the uh, current volatile conditions that we have. Uh, a lot of uh, extremism and radicalism is on the rise in the region. Uh, so Iran has to defend itself for many different reasons. We live in a time of unprecedented population growth. In 2015, the world has around 7.3 billion inhabitants. 